Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to thee, O Lamb of God. Just as I am and waiting not to rid my soul of one dark blot to thee whose blood can cleanse each spot, O Lamb of God. Just as I am, though tossed about with many a conflict, many a doubt, fightings and fears within, without, O oh Lamb of God. Just as I am, thou wilt receive, wilt welcome, pardon, cleanse, believe, because I promise I believe, O oh Lamb of God. Barb and I had been out west to Washington State. We drove it, met a few people on the way, missionaries with whom we pray every Wednesday, uh, various other Christian friends, and got out there, and I was reminded by my son's four children that two-year-olds go through a stage in their life which we call terrible twos. And it is very real. I don't know why they didn't come up with this terminology uh, when I was growing up. But I have this grandson who, it, while being very winsome and cute, knows how to get his way. And he keeps at it and keeps at it and keeps at it until he gets exactly what he wants. And it frustrated both Barb and me that our children are letting uh, their, their children act this way. But I also realized that the six-year-old brother somehow got through his terrible twos, so there's hope. <laughs> I realized that kids have a way of getting what they want. Nobody had to teach them these tricks. We came back to the Chicago area to spend time with our other son and his one-and-a-half-year-old child, who's, who's brilliant, because he's already entered his terrible twos. <laughs> and I watched as on several occasions when he didn't get what he wanted at the dinner table, he took his milk glass and threw it right over the edge and looked at us to see how we would respond. Well, my son and his wife are very kind and very loving, and I'm sure they don't want to show uh, the parents that they uh, get upset or uptight about these kinds of things. I was so upset or uptight, I was about ready to say something. 
he would take his food and throw it over the side after they would tell him, don't you throw your food on the floor. Don't you do it. No, no. And he'd throw it on the floor. Uh, he'd stomp his feet. He'd do all kinds of things. And it just infuriated me to no end that he knew exactly how to get his way. It is not fair to parents. Having said that, how do you get what you want? Do you try to outsmart the giver into giving you something that he probably wouldn't give otherwise? Or do you beg and beg and beg and beg to get what you want? Do you use magical words to get what you want? Every time I watch a magician, he's got in his vocabulary these magical words that I've not learned yet. And for him, they seem to work. Do you use those to get what you want from God? Or do you ask God for his gifts on his terms? What I'm going to be saying today is a reminder. But reminders are very necessary. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, please. You know where we are this day. You know the motives of every one of us who either came or stayed home. You know our hearts. And so, Father, I pray, please, speak because your servants are listening. And I pray it in the name of Jesus. Amen. In Matthew chapter 6, there's a passage that you are so familiar with, it may be right in the top five of all the scripture passages you know. And if I were to say, let us pray the Lord's Prayer, you'd know how to pick it up right away. It's given to us in Matthew 6 and in Luke 11, a little bit less of what Matthew 6 gives us. I'd like to begin with verse 5. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they, have, they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into the closet. And when thou hast shut thy door, pray to the Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask him. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Letting that sink in. Let me ask you again, how do you get what you want? 
And the answer from God's word is pray correctly if you have a need. There are going to be three things here I want you to, to, to recognize. First, pray correctly if you have a need. Now, Jesus says in verse 5, don't pray like the hypocrites. Why not pray like the hypocrites? Because they don't get what they need. It's that simple. If you ever wondered if your prayers are bouncing off the ceiling... They probably are. They probably are. Don't pray like the hypocrites. Then in verse 6, he says, pray humbly and sincerely. Enter your closet. It's just you and God when you pray. Shut everything out. When I first entered ministry, and I was in a very large church in seminary, and I was the... Uh, in intern pastor there and so I was asked to do all kinds of things that the pastor normally would do one of them was pray from the pulpit I had such a problem in my heart praying so that I would not pray to be heard I had to close my ears and when I closed my ears and talked it was like I was in this tiny closet and I could hear only my own echo and I felt like it was just God in me. And then I learned later, this is exactly what God wants in us to pray humbly, sincerely. It's just him and us. Then in verse 7, he says, do not babble like pagans. Now, before we go any further here, ask yourself a question. Do you pray like the hypocrites? You like to be heard. Do you do things that bring attention to yourself as you pray? Or do you enter your closet and you just want to pray to God, and when you pray to God, it's just like, it's just him and me? Well, the third one is coming here. Do not babble like pagans. Now, let me say something here, because in Luke 11, where this prayer is going to be given again, he's going to tell his disciples that if they don't get what they ask for, to keep praying. Be persistent in prayer. In fact, Paul tells us in uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, right around verse 16, pray continually. Remember that statement? It's a whole verse. Pray continually. Does he mean babble? Like the pagans? No, the key is... To speak a lot of stuff like pagans do. Know the difference. When you pray for a missionary or when you pray for your pastor, you say, I must have prayed that a hundred times, a thousand times. I can't count all the times I prayed. If you prayed sincerely and you're being persistent, that is valid. But when you're just praying things to be heard, which usually people do who are praying out loud in front of other people, they pray a lot of stuff. You don't need to do that to get what you want. That in Tibet, uh, I've seen where they have these prayer wheels. Maybe you've seen them. They let them blow in the wind, and they have requests on each of the little tabs that blow on this wheel. And as many times as that turns over, that's a prayer for them. That's another form of babbling. Well, if I pray maybe 500 times, God will hear. I've learned there are some things that I really want, but I realize, and I believe it's the Holy Spirit coaching me. See, Michael? Just pray once. That's what Elijah did on Mount Carmel. He did that when he wanted rain. And he did that when he wanted fire from heaven. And he wanted both on the same day. And you count it out. He prayed seven times for the rain and he prayed one time for the fire.
when you are praying what God wants you to pray, he may want you to keep going just because he wants to see how bad you really want it. I, I haven't figured out much more than that. But I know too sometimes it'll take a man of faith to pray one thing, or a woman of faith, to pray one thing, one time, and God will hear. It's like Peter, who found himself outside a boat in a storm on the sea. Now, I've been in a boat on the sea, and I feel like I've lost my balance before. I can't imagine trying to walk on the water, which he was trying to do in a storm. And he issued one prayer. And it's actually the same word that you get as Jesus is entering Jerusalem before he is crucified. Hoshana. Lord, save. One word. The key is, don't babble like pagans, but pray in faith. Pray in faith. I want to show you something in James chapter 2. I think sometimes we gloss over several passages in Scripture because either we don't understand them well, or we can't figure them out. Verse 2 of the first chapter, in other words, after his greeting, he says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into divers' temptations. I didn't know what divers meant for the longest time. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience, I didn't like the sound of the trying of my faith to get patience. Verse 4, but let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. That's where I was confused. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth all to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. Do you know what upbraid means? Gives to all men liberally, generously. Verse 6, but let him ask in faith, Nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. For James to begin his epistle with these words is something that would probably make most churches on the angry side. Because he says some things that are just, they don't make sense. And what sense we can draw from them, we don't like. Thank God in every situation is what he's saying. Thank God in every... Si First thing my younger brother said to me uh, when he met me in Culver, Indiana, he said, well, have you thanked God for this? He thought I hadn't. But at that point, I remembered I had to live as if I was really thankful to God for it because I've learned some things as a result of this virus that I need to act as a Christian. Do you thank God in all circumstances? That's what Paul says in, in uh, 1 Thessalonians 5 again. Thank God in all situations, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. You have to pray in faith. Don't, listen to me, don't not pray because the circumstance is ugly. Don't not pray because you don't think you're good enough to get what God has for you. Don't not pray 
because you you feel like you've you've gotten so many things from God that he should probably say no now don't not pray because you're a sinner let me tell you something and this may be new for one or two of you do you realize that everyone who prays is a sinner and in need of God's grace and God answers their prayers when they ask according to his will pray in faith so here four things you pray correctly when you have a need you don't pray like the hypocrites you don't pray uh, insincerely and, and in arrogance. You don't babble like pagans and you pray in faith. Now, here's the second category. Pray according to God's will if you need something. First I said pray correctly. Now I'm saying pray according to God's will if you need something. Think of the two-year-old again. In his terrible twos. He keeps this up all the time, trying to get what he wants. Eventually, uh, I think you're going to train him that he doesn't get everything every time he throws a tantrum or begs and begs and begs. He's got to learn to ask for things that will make you happy and want to give them to him. It's like grandma. When her grandson says to her at Thanksgiving time, Grandma, did you make those cookies? And she says, what kind of cookies? Those chocolate chip cookies that I love so well. And she says, I knew you were going to ask me that. And I've got a whole jar full of them. He asked according to her will. And got an abundance of what he wanted. First of all, Grandma's good. <laughs> Secondly, she's a good cook. But furthermore, she was just waiting for her grandson to come up and hug her and say, Grandma, did you make those cookies? Ask according to God's will if you need something. Look at verse 9 now. Ask God to reveal his holiness to you. I, I dislike the fact that so many Christians have misworded a word because of a song. The word is not hallowed, and kids will forever not understand what that means. The word is Hallowed. When something is hallowed, it was made holy. Hallow is another word for holy, and it usually means make it holy. When we come to that statement in the disciples' prayer, it's not the Lord's prayer because he really couldn't have prayed it <laughs> with his character. Couldn't have prayed it. He tells the disciples to reveal, to ask that God's holiness be revealed. Now, he uses the word name. Stop and think with me. I didn't change the thought here. Who is God? He is as his name is. Is he the good shepherd? Yes. Is he the, the king of kings? Yes. Is he the heavenly father? Yes. He's all of these things, but we don't really understand him as that. Is he the, the, the sovereign God who has everything worked out and planned out far more than you could possibly imagine? Yes, he's that. What about the giver of grace? 
See, we are always trying to measure God in human terms. Wow, God, that was really generous. And when we say that, we say it's generous because by man's terms, we would never do something like that. And we just realized it. Ask God to reveal himself to you before you ask anything else. It's the first thing on your prayer list. Ask God to reveal his holiness to you. Yeah, but Pastor Goebel, I've got so many important things to do. You have nothing more important than a good introduction to your prayer if you really want something. Then verse 10 says, confirm that your interest is in God's kingdom. Remember the words, let your kingdom come. And that's the wording from the Greek. Uh, when, when I checked this out in the Greek, I was blown away because all the things that God tells us here are commands. You tell my father this. You tell my father to do this. And I was, I was thinking, I shouldn't tell God anything to do. When you do it according to God's will, it's fine. When you ask grandma to do something she already wants to do, it's fine. Confirm that your interest is in God's kingdom. That's hard. You know why? Uh, Bill Bright, I think, is the one who made this famous in years past. He had a little booklet out, and in it was to show college-age students that mom hears even the slightest cry of a baby and so does God he put a little figure four upside down that looked like a chair now either Christ was on the throne the chair or you were on the throne the chair and he showed how you have got to get off for Christ to get on it. And even if you should get on that chair sitting on your lap, you'd get the point. He is either the one in control or you are. So when you ask God for something, you're letting him know, God, you're the boss. Confirm that your interest is in God's kingdom. Boy, that sets the table for God to give you what you need. Then verse 10, again, second half of it. Tell God you want to obey his will like an angel. Look at that. We've divided that up in the song too so that we, we totally miss the point. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thy will be done on earth just like it is in heaven. In other words, Father, help me to do what you want and to be just as good at it as an angel. When you get to the end of the day and you start thinking back of the things that you already said maybe to God and you think, Lord, did I look like an angel today? And at first you're going to think that if you didn't look like an angel, you failed. But here's what you really did. Your intention was right, and the result of what you did is more apt to be correct because you did it to be the servant of God. Why would God not want to give you something when that was your purpose and that was your action? Tell God you want to obey his will. And then fourthly, you get, you get to uh, your daily needs. Give us today our daily needs. See how the commands keep going and you're telling God what to do, but he doesn't mind because you're asking why? According to God's will. <laughs> I love to tell this story. I just don't think you'll believe me. When Judge Sheridan was alive, the two of us served on a, on a 
group, a uh, committee uh, called Marriages That Work. Any of you ever hear that? Marriages That Work. And we were, we found out that there was a pre-standing uh, offering from President Bush during uh, uh, President Obama's time that uh, we could qualify for a million dollars here in Michigan uh, for the advancement and strengthening of the marriage. We couldn't figure out why uh, President Obama left it, but we tried to take advantage of it, and we finally figured out we were the only group to, that complied with everything to qualify for this, and they turned us down. And God's spirit prompted me right at that point to say, is it over with? And so I stopped the group. I said, uh, are you saying there is no chance for us to get this money? And everybody looked at me as if I was a little foolish and said, that's right. There's no chance. And I said, would you let me pray about that? And they did. The only time in my life when God gave us a million dollars that I'd prayed for, <laughs> I didn't get a penny of it. I didn't need a penny of it. You ask God, what is your need? Because you've done these other things. Verse 12 says, tell God to forgive like you forgive. That's what it sounds like. Okay, that's what it sounds like in English. And forgive us our debtors as we forgive our, uh, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. The phrase really should look like, and forgive us our debts as we keep forgiving others. But an even better picture would sound like this. And forgive us our debts as if Christ would, because I sure don't want him to forgive like I forgive. Think of that for a second. Do you really want God to forgive you like you forgive others? Because I don't. Because I know I have a problem with forgiveness sometimes. Then the last one, tell God to keep us from temptation, to deliver us from our enemy. We should pray this prayer every, every day, if nothing else than this last phrase. Lord, I don't want to get into temptation today. It can cripple my, my, my service. It can cripple my reputation. It can... You just tell God, you don't have to report to the church what you prayed. And you don't even have to report to your kids what you prayed. Isn't that nice? But you tell God what it is that tempts you or tries you and say, God, deliver me from the devil today. That's a legitimate request. And when God answers that request, you are joyful. So what do we do? We pray according to God's will. That are at least six things. You ask God to reveal his holiness to you. Then you confirm your interest in God's kingdom. And you tell God you want to obey his will like an angel does it every day. Tell God your daily needs. That's easy because that's usually the only thing we pray. Tell God to forgive you. We almost never forgive this, but this has an addendum in verses 14 and 15. And, and listen to this, because I read it. If you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you, if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Wow. And it brings us to the third point here. What has to change if you want something from God? Remember the little two-year-old? He keeps doing it and keeps doing it and keeps doing it if it works. So 
someday that it changes. You get wise to that cute little kid. In my case, it's two boys. In my case, two years ago, it was twin girls. Their tantrum was to scream at the top of their lungs in a prolonged way. What has to change if you want something from God? That's where our prayer is now. Let's pray. Now, Heavenly Father, the message is going to keep going. And somebody else is going to remind us of this later on. Because the unfortunate thing is some of us are going to forget it again. And we'll think these are only magic words that are said like abracadabra and they should get us what we want. And so we pray the Lord's Prayer when we, whenever we're in a bad situation. Lord, please. Change our attitudes, our hearts, our habits. I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen.